Welcome to lesson two on music notation basics. Last time uh, in our first lesson we covered note names and uh, basically got an introduction to the staff and including treble clef, bass clef, the notes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, how they're placed on the staff, and uh, more including intervals like steps and skips and leaps moving both up and down. <coughs> Melody uh, really is at the basis of that first unit because melody includes notes and pitches as they move up and down the staff. Um, really, the engine to music, though, is rhythm. And <coughs> I always think without rhythm, uh, it's very, very hard to convey a musical message. Um, I think rhythm is essential uh, for nearly all music. And uh, certainly in jazz um, and in classical music, it's uh, really, really prevalent. Um, so it's also the way that you'll, if you can understand rhythm, you'll be able to play with other people because rhythm is what unites uh, performers in ensembles, um, mostly anyway. So this is going to be a very, very... Um, functional overview of rhythm and some basic rhythms um, and how to notate them and understand them uh, while really working through a staff line. Keep in mind that we've gotten rid of bass clef entirely <coughs> and we're only using treble clef. But really for rhythm, to just study the rhythm, we don't need to see any clef at all because rhythm transcends all clefs. We don't even need a staff line but we're going to have it up there so you can get used to it. The point though is that that note, the first note you see, you probably already know that is the letter A. Um, it doesn't matter if that circle is white, if it's black, if it has a stem, or if it looks any different as long as it's on that second space with the treble clef there, it's called letter A. Um, but that being said, because we're not concerned at all about the treble clef, we're not going to deal with whether that is functioning as an A or what. We're just going to look at how um, beats work and how rhythm works in general. So to get started, uh, first of all, this first line gives a really, really quick overview of four different types of notes. We've got here uh, what's called a whole note. Um, that's the first one, a whole note. And then a half note and then a quarter note, and then eighth note, and <clears throat> this is a single whole note here. This is a single half note. This is a quarter note, just one of these, and this is an eighth note. So what we end up doing is, over the course of each measure, you'll learn what a measure is in a second, um, we include however many notes of that type we can fit in. So for instance, um, well, here with a whole note, you only see a single whole note, and that covers the whole measure. It's the end of the measure if you see one of these lines. These are called measure lines, also known as bar lines. And the content in each, within each set of lines is what's in the measure or what's in the bar. So anything in here is part of this bar. Um, this can be called the first bar. Starting after this bar line, this is like the second bar, and it goes all the way up until this bar line. You're going to see in the second measure here, or bar, measure and bar are interchangeable, that there are there's enough room for two half notes. In the third measure, you can see how many quarter notes can fit in there. There are four quarter notes that can fit. And finally, in this last measure, uh, these there's a ton of notes here. Here's the end of the measure. You can count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight eighth notes in the measure. So let's start off with a whole note and then we'll uh, get into more detail what all of this really means. A whole note is comprised of four counts. And counts can also be thought of as beats. You can beat just thinking, I'm just clapping right here into the microphone. You can also think one, two, three, four. You can think a da 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 da. There's so many ways to feel a beat or to think of a beat. You can tap your foot. That's fine too. 
but either way there are four of them in each measure. What determines that? It seems it's a little arbitrary. Um, well, it's determined by this little 4-4 four, four sign here. And that 4-4 four, four sign is called a time signature. And basically, what we're dealing with is the top note tells you how many, the number, and the bottom note tells you what type of beat. That's a little confusing still, but if you just remember, the top one is the number of beats, and the bottom one is the type of beats. Um, that's a good start. So I'll tell you what it is, and then hopefully this will make more sense as we move on in the lesson. So the top number is four, so that means there are four of something, and the bottom is the type. This is means quarter note. You, know, you can think of it as a fraction where the bottom is four, so it looks like one quarter. So really what we have is four quarter notes over the course of a measure. To understand that we have to know what a quarter note is, um, but first let's start with the whole note. So a whole note means you get four beats in the span of one note. Um, that means if you play a note, if you hold that note out for four counts, it's going to sound like this. That's it. Let's hear it again. That's it. Now, a half note only gets two beats per note, so that's going to sound like this. So, if you have four beats in an entire measure to get from this point to this point, and the instruction is, hey, how many half notes can you fit in that one measure? If we know the measure is going to go by like this, one, two, three, four, I think we can fit two notes there. One half note is going to go with the first two beats. The next half note is going to go with the last two beats. It'll sound like this. That's it. So if you look down here, we have boom, boom. And you can see one, two, three, four written underneath. So this first note gets the one, two, and the second note gets the three, four. If we look over here at the back of the whole note, we've got one, two, three, four, all get it for that whole note. One, two, three, four. Now, quarter note. Quarter note is a big deal because quarter note is the beat. And when we come back to 4-4 four, four here, and we saw that the bottom was the type of note, it's referring to a quarter note. Because you get one beat per note in the case of quarter notes. So that means, let's erase this first part, that means from this line to this line we have four notes that we can fit in there, and it'll sound like this. That's it. One, two, three, four. You know what, I don't like using the MIDI controller, the keyboard on this, because there's a bit of delay into the computer with the keyboard, so rhythmically that's really screwed up. So I think I'll just sing and clap for these to get the message across. Um, eighth notes, this is weird. A half beat per per note. Oh boy. There's another way of looking at that. You can think of it as being two notes, two notes per beat. So two notes per beat means that you've got to th come up with a different counting system. So instead of one, two, three, four, we're going to think. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and notice that I'm only clapping or stomping on the down beats on beat 1, 2, 3, 4. The ands, which are written as a plus sign, sometimes is a little and sign if you prefer, but I like the plus, it's cleaner. Um, you still say and. You don't say 1 plus 2 plus two, 3 plus 4 plus. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and is how you would say it. Um, but 
anyway, I'm only clapping on one, two, three, four. Those are called downbeats. I'm not clapping on the upbeats, the ands. So I'm not going one and two and three and four and. That's because I want to show the notes going by while the beat is holding steady. Another way to think about this is imagine you have a floor and you have a ceiling. Here's the way an eighth note works. An eighth note starts off and let's say there's a little ball that drops. You know one of those super balls, one of those bouncy balls? Let's say it hits the floor. That's going to be beat one. And then as we move along it's going to hit the floor on beat two, beat three, and beat four. Boy, this little mouse drawing stuff is pretty awful. Uh, one and two and three and four and it's going to hit the ceiling on and. Downbeat is on the number down here. The and is up high. So here we go. The ball comes down doo -doo 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 -doo, and the measure starts. One and then it comes up and two and three and four and and then it could go on if there were a new measure but that's the design of eighth notes visually I think that's a nice visual so bouncy ball comes in one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and if I didn't count and I just said the notes it could be like this do 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 now if we put all these together the beat stays steady one two three four that's our pulse that could get faster if we choose a faster tempo the word tempo means that we're how it, it basically determines how fast or slow the piece is. So um, we can think about it in terms of beats per minute. For instance, the tempo of quarter note equals 60 means that it's going at, at a pace of 60 beats per minute. So we've got 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. That's pretty close to 60. I don't have a metronome in front of me. But that's how you determine it. That means that 120, quarter note equals 120, is going to go twice that fast. So we must be going somewhere if we're here. This must be somewhere around 90 or so, I would guess. Um, anyway, you can check it on a metronome, see, see if I'm close or not. Um, anyway, so... Uh, Again, it, I'm talking about tempo because I'm arbitrarily setting a pace that, where the tempo feels it, like it's moving, um, where it's not super slow, um, yet it's not so fast that it's a huge challenge to actually think of these beats. So now this first line becomes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and now if I sing the whole note and the sing the half notes, you'll actually hear the half note going by with the clicks underneath. And the clicks again, of course, are one, two, three, four. So now we're gonna have da 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 that's it tempo should be steady most music wants it to be so if you start counting this like this Ooh, that's a mess. You should just go back, rewind the video, and listen to how unsteady all of those clicks were while you were trying to play, or while I was trying to sing the notes. Um, very unsteady and really just wrong. There's one more detail you should know about this first line, which is that uh, this guy here is called a repeat sign, and this guy here is called a repeat sign. And if you watch the MIDI version of this uh, uh, rhythm video, you're going to see that once the computer plays 
to here, it goes back and it repeats it and it plays it again. And uh, that's nice because if you're listening to MIDI playback or if you're practicing this, you can just keep repeating this passage to really get used to it and start to feel the difference between whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, and eighth notes. So here we have some examples of what it's like to just um, play a series of whole notes or a series of half notes, series of quarter notes, series of eighth notes. We're not going to do these in the lesson. I want you to watch, uh, make sure you've watched the MIDI video and then tried these on your own, trying to keep a steady pulse. I recommend don't just play on your instrument, but also sing and clap or tap your foot, trying to develop a really steady beat. Most people can develop it for a measure, but it's hard to keep going measure after measure. It's also, eighth notes tend to be a little more challenging too, um, but you'll get the hang of it as long as you think slowly. The pace that I was doing is not the best practice pace to start off with, okay? It's, it's, the tempo I think is too fast. If you start like this, one and two and three and four and, that takes some coordination, believe it or not. So a better tempo is going to be nice and slow. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and etc. Breathing, just breathe wherever you can, um, just to get the hang of it. So now we move on to page two. <laughs> if you've already listened to the MIDI playback, this is hilarious because it, <laughs> nothing plays back. These are all rests, and these are just in here to show you what rests look like. So one thing to notice um, is that eighth rests look very different than any other rest. I got this little dot with this kind of like lightning little lines coming off of it, whatever. I guess quarter rests even looks more like lightning. Very, again, quarter rests look very different than others. People also draw rests in different ways. So you might see someone draw an eighth rest and it looks more like that. Someone else draws it and it looks more like this. Um, someone might draw a quarter rest like that. I tend to draw them a little bit like that. Other people go like that. <laughs> no, not that bad. But the point is, is that when you start looking at manuscript, you got to get used to what, how copyists are drawing their rests and things. and. Um, Basically, though, what's on the page here is very universal in most um, uh, copy editing and engraving in music. You've got a quarter rest that looks like that, an eighth rest that looks like that. Notice notationally, if you're writing out the numbers, if it's a rest, it's common to put it in parentheses. Um, now, here we have a half rest and a whole rest. Whole rests and half rests look almost, almost the same, but they're not quite the same. Um, the difference is that the whole rest hangs from the fourth line. There's the fourth line, and the rest hangs down like this. Right? Now, the half rest is from the third line and goes up. And the way that I think about these, it's not super clever, but it helps a little bit. This one looks like a hat. So we think half rest, hat. Like a half rest, right? Looks like a hat. Oh, that should be an H. This one is hanging like a bat. So you got the hat. It looks like you could wear it as a hat. I'll draw a little better hat. Here's the hat. There we go. And this one is like a bat because it's hanging and because it rhymes with hat. But hat, we got H-A, ha, half rest. You should get the hang of it, I'm sure. It's pretty easy. And then here we have a really nice exercise. If you can count through this with the MIDI recording, you're going to be in really good shape. What I do for the counting is I say one, two, three, four as a full voice. Don't mumble the words and don't just think them in your head. Really say them out loud. One, two, three, four in full voice and then one, two, three, four, the rests here in a whisper. So let's see. Um, yeah, I'll do the whole whole note line. So it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's it. Notice how steady it was. I didn't stop at the measure. Don't let the measure line knock 
you out, okay? The measure line is not something that should stop your rhythm. It's only there to help you compartmentalize. One thing I want you to notice is that in the meter of 4-4, there is a tendency to put a bit of an emphasis on beat 1. Beat 1 is a, is a nice arrival point in 4-4, four, four. so there's a bit of an emphasis there. It's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. You can feel that, right? So half notes. Um, again, a full row of half notes, um, but this, this gets a little tricky and you might want to think of repeating this for practice. If you aren't getting the hang of something, don't think it's because you don't know it. It could be because you're just not as familiar with it as you need to be. And the only way you're going to become more familiar with things is to practice. So once you get the hang of something, practice it even more and more. Don't just think, oh, okay, I got it. Let me move on. So a lot of these lessons, you're going to want to come back to them in practice. This stuff takes a lot of effort to really, really master. But you can master it. It's doable. People do it all the time. Um, so now we have half notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Wow, that's hard. Practice that. If I did it with clapping, I'll do it one more time. One, two. Boy. You know what? I won't say the numbers. I'll just clap and say the pitches. You can do it in a, a number of ways, but I'll try it like that. So, da, 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 done. And again, Boy, if I can sing, you can definitely sing. And you've got to really sing. You've got to really count out loud. I'm going to say that again. You have to count out loud. If you're not counting out loud, you're really not doing this. It's sort of like you can't learn a language in your head. If you're trying to learn French, you can't just think, okay, here's, here's how the French goes. I'm going to say it silently to myself. No, you have to get it off the tip of your tongue. You must practice hearing these rhythms in real time, feeling them coming from your body in real time, okay? And again, the clapping, the tapping is important because rhythm is something that should engage the entire body, not just your fingers and your throat and that sort of thing. Um, quarter notes, these are fun. Um, this gets, to me, a little more musically exciting when we get to quarter notes and eighth notes. Um, just because they're quicker, and I like things that are fast. Um, I always have. Um, maybe that's why I was drawn to jazz players like Coltrane and Parker, because uh, they just played so fast. Um, also good. It's good music. Um, anyway, here we have quarter notes, and we've got one, two, three, four, one, rest, two, uh, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Wow, that was a lot, and I kind of messed it up here because my tempo was too fast for just my first pass through. Again, this stuff takes practice. Let's clear this. Um, it's getting cluttered, and we'll try it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Wow. You can work on that one much slower at first. As slow as you need to go is fine, as long as you're steady. Um, if you don't have a metronome, you can get a metronome. You should get a metronome because uh, at first a metronome might be hard, but eventually it's going to be one of your best friends. It will really, really help you develop a solid concept of rhythm and really help you play your instrument accurately and ultimately uh, help you play artistically. Eighth notes and rests. So now we have a bunch of eighth notes. This is written a little strangely because usually we don't just write a whole line of eighth notes and eighth note rests. There are probably better ways to notate this. Um, in fact, I know of several, but just to focus on what eighth notes are and what eighth note rests are, we've got a whole line of practice where you can think eighth notes. Again, if I were just going to say this, it would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and 
Oh boy, it's too fast. Let's try it again slower. One and two and three and four and 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 wow. Um, you can clap it. You might hear me grunting a little bit in the rests there. That was another way of practicing through this where you do play or you do clap every beat and then sort of give a little uh in the spaces there, a little oh. So Another way to do it, of course, is the way that we did it up here, where you go clapping on just the downbeats. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I skipped over one here um, on accident because um, this needs a little more practice. But go ahead and practice it yourself, see how you do. Um, let's move on to page three get through page three here. Um, page three is a bunch of extras. Whoa. Um, let's slow down the camera here. Page three is a bunch of extras. These are other things you do need to know though. A dotted half note, first of all, is what happens if you aren't just dealing with a note that is either two beats or four beats. What if you have a note that needs to be three beats? And what you do is you take your half note, which is two beats, and you add a dot to the side of it. That's important. It's got to be to the side of it, to the right of the note, right there. That dot means, hey, instead of playing two beats, play two beats and then half of the note itself. So it's two beats plus one beat in this case. And that gives you three beats altogether. One, two, three, rest. Now, if you decide to put a note where this rest is, do you know what note you need to put there? Do you need to put a whole note, half note, dotted half note, quarter note, or eighth note? What fits right in this rest? Well, all you do is you think, what is the rest? It's a quarter rest. Good. Since you know it's a quarter rest, you can put a quarter note there instead. And that's actually what we've done here in the second measure. So we've gotten the same, we start off the same way with a three beat dotted half note, and we add a quarter note. Now here, this measure, this next measure, we're starting off with a quarter note on beat one, and that means this dotted half note is going to play two, three, four. This is kind of um, important because you don't always have to start, even though a dotted half note is three beats, it doesn't need to go on one, two, three. Those three beats could also be two, three, four, if you want them to be. So. This whole line now goes da 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 rest and we're done. Again, the MIDI version is entirely accurate <laughs> and you don't have to tolerate me singing. And so you can refer back to that for exactly how this line is played. And again, while the MIDI version is going by, try to clap and actually count along with it so you can get used to seeing how these numbers flow across the measure. So notice that I didn't just call this dotted half note three beats. I started off by saying you take the note itself, you see how many beats it is or what the, how long it is, and then you add to that value half of the note itself. So that's how we get three, right? So the dot isn't just giving it one beat, it's giving it half the value of the note itself. That's important because here we have the exact same dot. This is a dotted quarter note now. It doesn't, the dot does, here doesn't mean, oh yeah, play three beats. No, that was the dot and what the dot meant when it was in front of the half note, right? That's what the result was. But here the result of putting a dot is you take the note itself and you add half of the note's value. That means you're taking one and you're adding half of it to it. So you get one and a half beats, 1.5 for sure. So that's one and a half beats for a dotted quarter. Now this gets really confusing. One and a half beats. 
to understand what one and a half beats is, we need more than just one, two, three, four. Because that's one beat, two by itself, just seeing one, two, and then three, four. We're just seeing units, integers of one, right? One to two, three to four. That's not enough. We need the and signs also. So now we see what happens in each beat itself. So here's how this works. We have one and, two and, three and, four and. And beat one takes up that much. It's not just one, it's one and. And beat two takes up this, two and. So if we're playing one and a half beats, we need all of this first guy and a half of the second guy, which is to there. Make sense? So it's like all of one and then half of this. So we don't include this and here. We're just going to include one and two. So let's look at how this is notated down below. We've got one, two, and then the and here is not part of it. So we count one, two, and we get off the note before we get to and. So now we have this space, because we're not playing a half note anymore. We're playing a dotted quarter. So it doesn't go all two beats. It just goes one and then the downbeat, two, but not the upbeat of beat two. So this rest is a placeholder. And in order, if we did the same thing on beat three, we would get a dotted quarter going from three, four, and then a placeholder, another rest on the and of four. If you're still confused, I don't blame you. This is a very, very confusing one. Boy, this takes a lot. Oh, boy. I'm not good at drawing stars backwards. Oh, my goodness. Let's draw a star like this. This takes a lot of practice and a lot of thought. Thought accordion notes are not easy. They do get easier, though, when we fill up the rests. So instead of having a rest here and a rest here, let's fill those up. So we get to one, two, and on the end of two, we're going to add in an eighth note. One thing you should notice about eighth notes, I didn't talk about it down here, so I'll talk about it here. If you just have a single eighth note, the, beam, the note isn't beamed anymore, like these beams down here. It is flagged. It's a single flag. I think about a flag as being, you know, initially you have this beam. What if you don't? What about if instead of a beam, you've got, um, let's take the beam off here. This doesn't erase too well. Let's take the beam off. Instead, the beam drops, and you've got in its place, um, instead of going out like this, the beam falls, and you end up with like this little flag that comes up instead. So that's how we get eighth notes, um, single eighth notes. <coughs> so if we fill that up here, that now the dotted quarter and this extra eighth note form, they take up all the space, one and two and. So this dotted quarter uses one and two, and then the and is just for that final eighth note. Now, beats three and four we changed all together. Instead of a dotted quarter and an eighth note, we just made it one big half note, and that takes up all the space, three, four. Um, these are just other versions of um, dotted quarters. Again, this is an overview, so you're not going to master this. Um, and I'm not really giving you enough examples yet. Those will come later. Um, so dotted quarter, if we sounded out this whole thing, would sound like this. Da, 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 da. Da 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 da. Done. Let's go back to this first one. You're gonna hear da space da space. There's a little bit of a rest there, right? Da da. Now measure two. This is where you really get into the a very characteristic dotted quarter sound. Da da da. Think about music like um, Little Drummer Boy, boom, 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 right? Do, 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 da, 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 da. So again, the beginning, that first little bit, do, 
dum bum. Here, you're gonna hear that dotted kind of lilt of a rhythm. Da 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 da. Very nice rhythm to learn. Let's finish this up. Sixteenth notes. One, two, three, four e and a one, two e and a three, four. Oh, I'm seeing a misplaced one there. Let's, let's cross this off. It should be right there. So again, we got one, two, three, four e and a one, two e and a three, four. These are all a little bit misaligned. Um, we'll get there. So you've got one, two, three, da ga da ga da da ga da ga da. And if we clap that out, one, two, three, four e and a one, two e and a three, four. Da 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 da. Of course, because we have four notes now we need in one beat we need more sounds so four e and a uh, gives us our four sounds we can use um diga diga is a nice way of counting it also da 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 either way now time signatures these are just different time signatures this is helpful if you um, want to play songs that don't just follow a, a framework of one two three four so Two four one two one two. Repeat it. One two one two. A lot of marches are in two four. Da 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 da. Yo run da 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 da. One two one two one two one two. Was I just saying three four? I meant one two one two. And three four over here we have one two three one two three. And think about like um, waltzes. Go a little bit faster, you get a tune like um, uh, my favorite things. We've done um, five four. Uh, maybe the most classic jazz example of this is take five. In the example here, we have five quarter notes and a dotted half and then a dotted uh, then a half rest so one two three four five one two three rest rest and that's it so study hard and um, we'll move on from here to actually get to some real uh, entire melodies and uh, work from there with notes in action <laughs>